My name is Vladimir Pavlov. I'm a product manager slash architect in SAP Labs Bulgaria, responsible for the uh, SAP Cloud Platform. Uh, I've been uh, doing Java development and enterprise Java for I don't know how many year, years already, and uh, been part of the Java expert group, and um, I'm a member also of the Bulgarian Java user group, and my pleasure to have here Nedelch today with me. Thanks, Lolo. Uh, my name is Nedelch Delchev. I'm also uh, from SAP, a development architect in the cloud uh, platform area, and uh, Okay, well, I'm one of the drivers also of uh, this open source project Dirigible. Do you know what Dirigible is? <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Kinda, <laughs> kinda. Yeah, okay, but so we'll see you know. today. Yeah, part of it. Okay, so, yeah, Hane Delcho. Um, you know, Hi, Lalo. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you? Uh, so, um, you know, as I said, I've been doing Java e since, uh, actually, J2E since CMP 1.1, actually, you know, CMP 1.1 was the, what? yeah, no? How old are you? Okay, don't, don't ask me these <laughs> questions, but, yeah, maybe how old is Java e? Yeah, uh, another <laughs> question. But, uh, yeah, so uh, CMP 1.1, maybe you don't know, but it's actually one of the first microservices because uh, it was uh, fine-grained, it was uh, loosely coupled, and then o only remote, yeah, which, was, <laughs> which was not a good choice. But still, yeah, so um, a quote here of Adam Bean, by the way, I should uh, ma make the credit to him. So, yeah, but nowadays there is this um, yeah, trend for um, building everything in server-side JavaScript, you know, Node.js, and I've been tasked with a project to, to do this, and it's really driving me crazy. I really, probably I'm, yeah, as, as you said, how old are you? Probably I'm too old, but these young hipsters, really, they, they, they really drive me crazy, and I don't really, maybe I'm just too used to Java E, but, um, yeah. Can you, can you help yeah. me with, with this? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I understand what you're talking about. You do? Yeah. By the way, uh, is there somebody that uh, already use uh, Node.js? OK, sorry for you guys. So you know what, what it is. And uh, is there somebody that use Node.js for productive customer-facing applications? Yeah, as expected. OK. <laughs> so we are in the uh, Java conference. So yeah, of course. So, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> But uh, don't don't forget, JavaScript is actually JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> it's ours. Yeah, like ham and hamster. Yeah, <laughs> almost the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what what uh, currently we want to show you is uh, how you can use uh, JavaScript in your really uh, business application, customer-facing business applications, to write business logic, and in the same way to you leverage your Java knowledge. Cool, yeah, I, I guess that, that I will like it, but let's see. Okay, so, short quiz. What is enterprise JavaScript? Do you know? Any guess? Or should I guess? Okay. No, really. Probably you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know either, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's JavaScript for enterprises, I would say, because it sounds like that. Mm -hmm. It's more about uh, Java-focused enterprises. Since we're at the Java conference, yeah, maybe that, yeah. That, that's it. So at the Java conferences, uh, you see there are uh, lots of sessions about specifications. Uh, there are collaborations about um, specifying and defining uh, what the APIs uh, should be. Yeah, we've seen the, the, the session by Heather in the, in the morning, yeah. Yeah, it's in comparison in the uh, Node.js, let's say, area and the conferences, there are lots of uh, people that, uh, individuals that make some stuff and the others Believe. try to use it. Try. Yeah, okay, so <clears throat> what we want to achieve, what is, actually our main purpose here and what you want to, to say. So we want 
to make a standardized API in the same way like we already have lots of standard APIs in Java, we want to, we want to define a standard API for JavaScript developers and to give this to business application developers. And that, that's good. I mean, standards are really good. Yeah, not, not like Spring, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and also, yeah, de facto standards are also kind of standards, right? De facto, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, and let's stop talking. Yeah, let's, let's see uh, how do you start with this enterprise JavaScript API. Can you show me, yeah, any, any first touch with uh, a new API or language or anything should be a hello world. Okay, do you see it? Probably, let me do this. Is it better? No? Okay. Well, what, what is this, uh, what is this uh, editor that we're showing now? It re re really looks cool. It's uh, Eclipse RAM. Ah, okay, it's so it's based yeah. on op open source as well, yeah? Open source, yeah, if uh, you know that dirigible is the web Eclipse, <laughs> Orion is uh, the de facto JavaScript editor. It's already chosen also by Google and uh, IBM, of course. Yeah. Because they are main so we're going to turn today, yeah, Web yeah. Eclipse. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so let's start with uh, yeah, the simplest thing, uh, Hello World, of course, and. Uh, Okay, now I want to show you something that probably you already know from Node. This, this oh, yeah, this, this seems similar to, to Node, yeah, this common, common JS require. Yeah, uh, actually, there are a little bit difference. Uh, if you want, I can explain you, or if somebody wants in details. Uh, mm -hmm. The main purpose of this require is something like import in Java, right? Yeah. Uh, it's as simple as it, uh, and just one word. This one is the uh, actual uh, module that you want to load. So yeah, just just to, to see that I'm really getting responses. One of the modules in the enterprise JavaScript API that you're importing here. Yeah, yeah? exactly. Okay, and uh, to be easily understandable and uh, for actually for Java developers we stick on this global install. So require in dirigible, in enterprise JavaScript API, works exactly in the same manner like imports in Java. So uh, one module is this module. There is no rel relative uh, module instantiation and loading like in Node.js and NPM. Okay, but just not to be confused, this is not like the Java 9 modules, right? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool, yeah. Okay. So, uh, in this way, you can load dependency, in this way, response, and you can do something with this response. You know okay. from serverless specification what request and response are. Of course, are, I know serverless, right? yeah. Okay. Okay, that really, really, really looks similar and very easy, yeah. but that's just a hello world. Yeah, we, we see it. Yeah, actually, good thing is probably that you see it as a preview here. Can you, can you change quickly? And, what, what do you need to, okay, there's no recompile in JavaScript, but how would the, the change look like? Hello, Lado, save. Oh, okay, so that's really fast. Yeah, and uh, actually this instance is uh, located in Canada, in one of the Eclipse data centers, and you see it's, it's, it's not bad. Cool, yeah. but yeah, let's see something more sophisticated, let's say, how, how about uh, yeah, passing some requesting a resource and passing some parameters? Okay. It seems that. Oh, it seems similar again, and it's almost again like the servlet API. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, the main purpose of the API I already uh, said it's uh, to to give the the standard APIs for JavaScript developers, but you see the trick. Most of the current uh, definitions of the APIs are very much like to the Java, actually the Java APIs, the Java standard APIs. That's why I like it. 
yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, there are some that we just uh, make it even simpler. Okay, uh -oh. well, we'll but see you guys. At the end, you can leverage your knowledge from Java, so you know how to get parameter from the request. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, so here, if I'm not wrong, if I put here name equal to J prime. So okay. You see it works. Yeah, 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 but but that's yeah. that's really simple. Yeah. What else can you do with the this HTTP or request response modules? Okay. You can do all the standard stuff. So you can uh, get also headers. You can uh, work with cookies. Also, we can work with uh, with session. Yeah, session. In, okay, maybe yeah, in the cloud world with this all stateless architectures, you know, twelve factor and so on, not that important. But sometimes you really need need to to store a session as well. So does it work? A session in JavaScript also not really. Uh, it depends what you want to do. So if you want to use session, you can use it. Okay. So you you decide. Okay. And basically here you set the session and then uh, get it and it's there, okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah, for, okay, for most of the current uh, business applications that we know, uh, they're still stateful, right? Yeah, especially if it's uh, yeah, on-prem and so on, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but of course you can not use this API and your services okay. can be stateless here. Okay, right. but how about, okay, the other way, if, if, uh, if my application needs to call some resource and um, basically, yeah, get the, the result of it. Okay, then? For example, in Java, we have this uh, very verbose uh, uh, Apache HTTP client, which, okay, it's simple to use, but still some boilerplate code that you need to write. And, yeah, maybe, maybe, do yeah, have for things to have something to suggest. For this purpose, we decided to simplify the, the stuff. So yeah, okay. not to hear the idea, not to copy one one to one uh, the Java APIs. Where it is, uh, sometimes it's it's better just to simplify the stuff. So in this way, it's uh, uh, seems more like uh, jQuery and uh, Node.js API. So you can just uh, use get method or post mm -hmm. or the other methods. Uh, and of course you can here also uh, add uh, some more parameters, some options. <coughs> so let me quickly show. So where you can find some more information about the APIs, you can quickly go to dirigible IO. Oh, nice header. Uh, yeah. And in the documentation, click on API. So here is the full. Uh, okay, so this, these are all the modules that, that you are now talking about, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, they constantly going. So this one, HTTP client. So as you see, the, the methods get uh, post, put, delete. Uh, yeah, they, they can, yeah. Uh, receives also options. So, but uh, okay, here you see one example. If you need more examples, probably you can click on samples. Ooh, so that's very comprehensive set of samples. There are lots of lots of samples here. And this one basic. So as you see in this sample, you can. Uh, you can provide some options in JSON format. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. because yeah. you're already JavaScript developer, right? <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> so it's not possible with JSON. Uh, and yeah, you can provide on the method as parameters. Okay, great. And um, so how does it work actually behind the scenes? What, what okay, you said it's uh, yeah, simplified. I see it's simplified, but what, what does happen behind behind this code? Maybe yeah. explain Currently, a bit. Currently, this is backed uh, by HTTP client, Apache HTTP client. Oh, so it's the same library that I've been using for years in Java, now used yes. by, by this enterprise JavaScript API implementation. Yes, yes, exactly. And here the trick is that um, currently, for instance, uh, 
a plan is to provide also uh, API which is backed by uh, this new uh, R uh, JAX RX, JAX, JAX RX uh, uh, 2.1 mm -hmm. specification, for instance. Okay. <clears throat> and to, to get this um, uh, RX Java modules and uh, uh, non-blocking mm -hmm. and asynchronous calls. Yeah, that would be nice as well. But mm -hmm. yeah, really, how, how does it, maybe you can just show me something in the implementation. How does it look like okay. this HTTP client calls? Okay, so let me quickly go again to the API. So to show you how you can go to the source, in the API you can open the source directly. Uh -huh, okay, so it's also here. Okay, now, now I also see it. Yeah. Okay, and this, this if engine equals nashorn, and then else, why, why is this needed, actually? What's the, what's the idea? Okay. Uh, currently, uh, in Dirigible, we support um, only JVM-based um, JavaScript engines. So this means Rhino, uh, which is the default, uh, and Nashorn. Uh, and, yeah. What about V8? V8, we, we plan. Okay. We plan, we have Because it's also the, the engine in Node.js. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and actually, this is uh, the engine, yeah, in the Node.js and also in the Chrome browser. Yeah, of course. And it's uh, actually in, uh, currently in development. Mm. Uh, Rhino is a little bit already left. Mature. <laughs> Mature, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and here, uh, also one of the tricks that um, we, we will leverage to provide the compatibility layer in this enterprise JavaScript um, about the API for the different engines. Okay, so let me see if I now understand what you're saying. Basically, the, the thing is that I can write the same code and I don't care about what is the underlying JavaScript engine that is running it because the enterprise JavaScript API will take care of translating it if needed to, yes. to this end. Okay. And in the same way, you are really not uh, tightly coupled with uh, the actual engine. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's, that's good. So that's first of all open and yeah, that's yeah. What, what, why you say it's standardized, mm -hmm. standardizing the, cool. Yeah. yeah. At the end, you are application developer, you are not a framework developer, or, yeah. Yeah, so okay. You should think about your business logic. Okay. Let's go again. This samples section, okay. So, ask me whether you can do upload. Yeah, yeah. can you do upload? <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is the way. Probably looks similar because it's uh, also um, very yeah, similar to the uh, Apache uh, upload. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. APIs, right? So, yeah, go. Uh, yeah, exactly. If it's multi-part, you can parse request, and you can, in this way, print something. So uh, you can easily implement a <coughs> HTML five. Is it HTML five or JSP or? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't look really fancy, but yeah, I guess it's just for the for the demo. It's so, so if I get it right, I can basically do the same upload uh, functionality uh, in independent of the of the of the engine below and using this uh, wrapper, let's say, which, which you just showed. Yeah. Okay. And this one is uh, just your. Uh, location of your service, okay. backend service. Mm -hmm. And this is the form. You can choose a file. Submit. Okay, and this brings me the, the file content. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay then, uh, so next question is, uh, how, how do I secure my application? For example, I need to provide some authorizations and uh, authentication. So how does it look like in enterprise JavaScript? Okay, it's very similar to ah. the, again, the, again, again, the serverless <laughs> APIs. 
coming here, but not really. I mean, yeah. it, it's user is in row, so why did you do that, not, not following the, the, the strict API of, of the servlet yeah, specification? It's, it's just simplified. When you need user, you have to get it, right? Yeah, but also maybe because you can't, uh, yeah, don't, don't mess with Oracle, because like Google did, right? And uh, use their APIs. Is David here? No. Yeah, okay, yeah, we can say okay. that, because David is not. We can mess yeah. with Oracle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, but now uh, we've seen the, the, the web part, and of course every, every productive application should do with some some data and store the data in the database. And you know, in, in Node, there are a lot of drivers for, for, for each and every database, but none of them really does the, the, the good job for everything. So one is good in some parts and the other is good in other parts, but there is no single driver, for example, for any database that really does all the, all the, all the stuff nice for you. So that, that really bothers me all the time. And uh, is there a solution for this with enterprise JavaScript? And probably uh, you like JDBC in Java, right? Of course I like it, yeah. Although I also like JPA, but mm -hmm. who, who likes J JDBC actually here? Yeah, who likes JPA? Okay, a bit more. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm just too old school. Okay. Yeah, but why did you ask me about JDBC? Because currently I'll show you how JDBC like APIs looks in JavaScript. Ah. So what uh, uh, everything what you, you need is just to uh, import this module. Uh -huh. and, and afterwards. Okay, I'm working with a data source object. Yeah, you follow the, the path that you know. Okay, so you just redefine JDBC as JavaScript database connectivity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, the good things here is that you can, uh, here we can leverage the, uh, not only the standard API, but also the mature, already working JDBC drivers. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, for, for JDBC we really have good driver support by the corresponding database vendor, and yeah. this is really, uh, really amazing, yeah. Okay, uh, what else can you show me, basically? Okay, I can show you also FALSA API. Okay. So it again is something like the Java EO, mm -hmm. right? Yes, looks cool. and Java NEO. Yeah, and Java ne NEO, yeah. Uh, the good part here is that um, <coughs> by using uh, Java underneath, you can implement uh, some complex MapReduce algorithms and to leverage already implemented stuff yeah, in Java course. or in some frameworks and to expose only high-level API for the application developers in the JavaScript. So okay. currently, you can, uh, yeah, you can have some really complex par parallelized um, um, computation of some mm -hmm. files, for yeah. instance, uh, but you don't need to implement this in JavaScript. Yeah, that, 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 that would be really nice, because yeah, everybody is anyway using Java 8 nowadays, right? So nobody's mm -hmm. using lower versions, I guess, hopefully. Yeah, so that, that would be nice. I mean, then you can really probably do some search in the files without reading the whole file in, 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 in JavaScript, and then, uh, yeah, basically processing the whole file just mm -hmm. to find yep. something. Cool. Yeah. That's, that's nice. And again, it's really like the, the Java APIs for working with files. What about streams? Actually, yeah, because I just was reminded because in the same time there is a, a, a stream session in the, in the, in the, in the other hole. Um, can, you, can you also do something with, uh, work with streams in this API models? Okay, the good news here for you is that, of course, you can do also streams in JavaScript. And uh, also the good news is that you can leverage the <laughs> streams implementation in Java, uh, <clears throat> which is, yeah, as all in all, uh, very performant. Uh, <clears throat> so okay, this is basically about the, the other flavor streams like uh, input and output streams. 
Um, and as I see, it's again using a familiar API, so I don't need to learn anything new, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. You can, you can copy stream, you can pipe streams, and so on. Okay, so, yeah. And actually, you can just say this from the JavaScript, and it, the magic happens actually in the JDM, mm -hmm. in the Java side. Okay. This is the good part. Okay, and you know, with all this async, in, in Node.js, it's maybe good, but I still sometimes really need to, uh, maybe I'm, again, just too old, to work with, with threads and multi-multi-threading. Uh, is there, I, I know maybe maybe a stupid question, but is there a way to, to work with, with threads in JavaScript, in, in this enterprise JavaScript API? Okay, now I understand you are really Java developer that tries of course to, I am. Yeah. Yeah, to write JavaScript, but okay. I really don't know why you need threads in JavaScript, uh, but maybe you, because you I just like them. them. Yeah. Yeah, but you can have them. Yeah. So uh, in Dirigible, in Enterprise JavaScript, you can create a runnable just as a function. Okay. So that's basically like the, the Java runnable object, right? Yeah. And to create worker thread to start it, and afterwards just to print. Can I also pass parameters to the, to the, to the, to the job, basically? So it's a job, right, basically, yep. that you want to, to pass. So can I, can I pass parameters somehow to this job? Uh, at the moment, it's not uh, yet implemented, but you can contribute this. <laughs> OK, yeah, maybe I'll try. Or you can try, guys, as well. OK. Okay, ah, now I'm seeing you're going to the fancy stuff, web sockets. So, what do I need to, to work with web sockets in, in enterprise JavaScript? Uh, sometimes, sometimes it's... Sometimes it's, win, sometimes loom. Yeah, it's... it's <laughs> neat. So, does somebody use web sockets? Yeah, a lot of people. So yeah. Okay, uh, it's still this bidirectional communication, which has some problems with firewalls, uh, still used. And uh, this is how you can you can uh, yeah create a WebSocket server side yeah, service. Mm -hmm. And then that's the basically the 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 own message that you yes. Implementing here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this sample you can you can find um, in in the samples area in, in GitHub, of course. Uh, yeah. And this is how you can implement also uh, a chat simple, client. Yeah, yeah. chat clients, simple clients in in uh, in the browser, running in the browser. So very concise, I would say again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, but this one. I'm sure you'll laugh. <laughs> really? Soap? <laughs> Come on, yeah, guys, that, does anyone remember soap? Isn't it all, all rest nowadays? Ah, okay, okay. Oh, oh, that, that's more <laughs> hands than I expected. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah and what, what enterprise without soap, really? And you know, some guys uh, I see that uh, have implemented the whole SOAP framework. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Kudos, guys. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, the real life is that uh, in the business application area, uh, no matter that uh, you can be a very cool guy to want to do only fancy stuff to use only uh, the latest and greatest latest greatest uh, asynchronous stuff non blocking and not just and everything at the end you will reach the point that you have to have to you, um, connect to some soul website yeah because these services will not disappear soon right yeah <laughs> okay so th that's a lot of code now i see yeah but but yeah, it's not less in, in, in Java anyway, that we, 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 as far as I remember, we've, we've done. Come on, but it's beautiful. Uh, it's still JavaScript. Yeah. 
Okay, it's not, uh, it's beautiful, maybe not that beautiful like, uh, like CSK's goals in, in the first minute, <laughs> but yeah, it was amazing, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I can show you even more uh, samples, but uh, I think. No, that, that, that's, that's, that, that's good, I, I'm pretty convinced already, so. Really? Yeah. Let's see what. Uh, let's see if I understand what what we what you've shown me now. So, the benefits of, of this. Um, yeah. So first of all, yeah, maybe I can go. So first of all, I like that it's standardized, uh, standardized APIs that uh, that you can use with any. Okay, maybe not any, but where you are working on. Um, providing support for more and more engines, and standards are really good. I do believe that. So, yeah, sometimes, uh, yeah, you have to pay the the price for these standards and for the governance because, yeah, the price is time. Sometimes uh, uh, JCP is a little bit slow, but the other the other ways, this wild. Uh, yeah, because otherwise, uh, to I, I, go in the jungle. I, yeah, I understand what you mean. So basically, yeah, somebody is doing something. There's no standard, and the next day they can change it, and uh, they can break all the all, all your code uh, because it's simply not compatible. Yeah, so it's it's a trade-off. Uh, but I, I really mean for for enterprise applications, you really need to to have something robust and uh, and yeah, based on standards that doesn't break just yeah. like this. You don't talk about Spring, right? Let, let's not uh, okay. bother with Spring anymore. <laughs> okay. What else? Yeah. Portability. So uh, the idea of enterprise JavaScript is to um, have this um, ag agnostic idea from the uh, operating system database or even the, the runtime. You can you can. Yeah. Deploy this on uh, Java E server or even Tomcat, pure web uh, container, on Jetty or whatever you want. Or, or you can even run as a jar file. Executable so actually, jar what are the requirements for, for this to, mm -hmm. to run? What do I need as an infrastructure? So uh, the main build, you can go to download section from the here. From the site, you can go to download, and you can see. For so it's just a WAR file, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so basically, yeah, I can run it. Files. I can run it in any what just a, just a servlet container. Yep. Okay, great. So uh, for just to try to test it, uh, you can um, you can just grab this trial WAR file and to uh, deploy on your uh, own Tomcat. You can go on trial, okay, from the site. You can go here, try it out. Oh, nice. So there's also a trial environment that you can play with before. Yep. Um, yeah. And the connection. Downloading it. Okay, that's in Canada, right? Uh, yeah, but here we have a session, but I think currently the connection was lost. Okay. Okay, I, I believe you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just just to serve it, for example, Tomcat is all that I need mm -hmm. to to run this. Yeah. Cool. And for for uh, for production, of course, you can you can um, configure uh, Digibot to work with your database clusters, uh, yeah, Postgres, MySQL, Oracle, even, or Hana. Of course. Um, also. Some uh, NoSQL databases you can you can have, and everything is configured. So basically, I have a choice of JavaScript engine, have a choice of operating system, a database, and yep. even the runtime environment. Because you said it might be Tomcat, it might be Jetty. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's really cool and open. And the thing that uh, maybe I don't appreciate that much, but the JavaScript developers would appreciate, I guess, is that you are sticking to really this what JavaScript objects, native JavaScript objects, not even though they look like the Java objects, like the data source, but they're still 
uh, JavaScript objects, and that's that's good because you don't mess with concepts from several languages in 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 one in one piece of code. Yeah, and this this can become really messy if you if you do that. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah believe me. Yeah. Okay, I'm Java developer as well, and uh, a little bit JavaScript developer, but. Uh, I, I don't want to see Java stuff, real Java stuff in, in my JavaScript yeah, files. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> and okay, let yeah. me explain this. Okay. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, um, the dirigible actually is not, uh, is not only uh, Eclipse in web, so it's not just web Eclipse. Uh, it has also server-side runtimes, so engines, and uh, also repository, and so you can create projects which can run in Dirigible. So here the main idea is to have this in-system development. So you can have one instance or one cluster. You can just go log in the browser as we we um, do currently, and you can start implementing your stuff and automatically you see the result there. Uh, and all these projects are just content stored in a repository. It's uh, easy, easily transportable, so you can just export from one instance, import in another instance, and they will run. So all the integrations, so if you, of course, if you only develop against this enterprise API, it can be transported without any problems to another instance. And, and you say not only my project, but I, I can also get the, the whole the whole infrastructure and transport it to another instance. Yeah, because everything is content, including okay. the API itself. Okay. Cool. So uh, you can go on GitHub. Uh -huh. Come on. No, okay. So uh, this is Dirigible Labs. Uh, this is uh, the place also associ associated with uh, Eclipse uh, and Eclipse Dirigible project. But this is for some experimenting uh, and some some stuff that we we are doing every day. And just when they uh, matured enough, we put into the official release. So. Here, when you type core API, so you can open it, and you can see the project of the API itself. So you can go there and to see how it's implemented. Okay, so this is the all the, all these models that that you showed yes. how they can be used. So they are available here. I can basically uh, copy them and uh, work with them transport them together with my my application code. Yep, cool. There are also some cool projects here. If you are interested, uh, some stuff uh, for model-driven development, some RESTful frameworks implemented uh, in JavaScript with enter against enterprise JavaScript, mm -hmm. some applications, some even some Kubernetes uh, management system. So, yeah, in the future we plan lots of cool stuff. Can you say at least some about that? Uh, okay, I don't see Milen. Milen Diankov is not here, right? So I can say it then that um, currently Dirigible is uh, based on OSGI, but uh, we we saw already that um, younger colleagues don't like it very much. It's quite complex for them to have all these um, plugins, XMLs, um, OSGI declarative services, plus uh, P2 repositories with features, uh, and target platforms, yeah, and yeah. Maven build with Taiho, and it's really complex stuff. So okay, we so what's the solution? To this. And uh, currently we are in process of defining what, what to do in uh, next release in uh, 3.0. And at least for the framework underneath, we really eager to re-implement, let's say almost from scratch. 
um, with uh, newest technologies and newest Java specification, Java APIs, and to, uh, in this way we can leverage also new, uh, new additions, new modules to enterprise JavaScript. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so all of you are welcome to contribute with ideas uh, and code even. Uh, to, yeah, let's define this together and to, to make this um, to, uh, useful for all of us. Uh, at least what we realized currently, it's really a huge beast uh, at the moment, right? But uh, there are lots of features for database uh, development and modeling, for uh, JavaScript uh, service uh, scripting, Groovy uh, you can write, uh, uh, JRuby integration we have also, uh, uh, workflow engines, uh, well, messaging. wiki uh, pages you can create here and write uh, uh, lots of uh, lots of lots of stuff, lots of features. Actually, saying wiki, this, this is right. This is basically done in in Markup yeah. and yeah, it's uh, running directly in the dirigible instance. Yes, cool. And there are lots of stuff here as a features. We already uh, realized what what is uh, good to have, what is really nice to have. Uh, we proved the concepts with in-system development, uh, content-centric and um, this um, rapid application development techniques with wizards and all, all this stuff that are really cool. And we proved that uh, really uh, developing in the browser, at least for JavaScript, is not total bullshit. It's, it's really cool. And it's really useful. We already mm -hmm. have uh, some guys that uh, created um, enterprise applications, really real enterprise customer facing applications with, with uh, these paradigms. So what we want now is really to go to the next level with this new release. And we can go together, right? Because it's open, it's on GitHub, and yep. everyone can contribute with ideas and also with real code. Yeah? Yep, cool. Thanks a lot. You are also welcome. I'm sold. Yeah, uh, I, I promised to 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 contribute something, but I forgot what it is. So you can you can say that I promised whatever you think. Yeah, about <laughs> the threads and parameters. Ah, okay, the threads. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now I know what is enterprise JavaScript, and hope everyone in the room also knows this. And I can use that, that I really appreciate. I can use my Java knowledge to implement applications in, in JavaScript as well. And yeah, as we said, we can contribute. And uh, yeah, it's an Eclipse project. It's very Did easy. I miss something? It's very easy. Once you register in Eclipse, after that, it's, everything is very easy. <laughs> this part so the hard, the hard part <laughs> is the registration, yeah. Yes. Andre is laughing, smiling, because he knows as well, I guess. Okay. Yes, cool, so sense. thanks a lot. I think this this was very cool for, and now I can get rid of Node.js. Yeah, kind I like of. that you like it. <laughs> thanks, Nadeoj. Yeah. Thank you, guys. So, questions? Any practical advice on short JavaScript? <laughs> 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 I was about to ask the same thing. Okay. Uh, let's answer in this way. Uh, we are open to add TypeScript. So, if you want to <laughs> contribute, <laughs> contribute, uh, <laughs> it's um, it will be really nice. So, what what is um, interesting in TypeScript, which a little bit um, contradicts to the idea of dirigible is that you have um, this translation step. But of course, if this translation step can be done really quickly, it's okay. So even you can, uh, so don't get me wrong. So we use JavaScript currently as a dynamic language. So interpretation is the key part here. Why? Because it's fast. It doesn't need to redeploy to restart something, you know. You can do the same things even with Java, right? So with uh, hot replace and yeah. So you can do this. Even even if restart of some lean server 
can take just one second, it's okay. So you cannot realize that something uh, has been changed. So it's okay, but yeah, the, the, the main idea is uh, here really to have this dynamic system. So if you can, can do that, I mean, to when you implement something, this scripting service, when you click save, if you can execute it immediately to see the result, it's okay. How it works underneath doesn't matter at the end, right? It just has to be really quick. So, uh, as an answer, it's possible if TypeScript stuff, the generation to JavaScript uh, takes really uh, small amount of time. Otherwise, it's not exactly the the way we want to go. You understand what I mean. Well, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, maybe I have an answer and also a question for you. <laughs> Uh, why would you? Why would anyone want to use TypeScript if they want to? If they can use uh, Python or any other language on top of uh, JVM? So I think uh, Java, uh, this uh, dirigible is specifically targeted for JavaScript, but it also makes sense to extend the API to other dynamic languages. Do Do you think it makes sense to to extend this effort to other languages that are running on Java e, uh, Java VM? Thanks for the question. Uh, so, very good question. <laughs> um, probably now is the time that I can say that Dirigible is already uh, seven, seven years of development. We included uh, lots of stuff, lots of uh, integrated uh, with lots of frameworks in the past. Uh, some of them, we put them, uh, afterwards we some exclude some of them. So we have integration with JRuby, Scala, Groovy, uh, uh, Python with uh, Jitom, right? We have, we had all of that, and we we already uh, probably have in some Git repos. Uh, but why we just remove them? Because currently we are um, focused on something that we use our team. And currently, we are focused on JavaScript. So if somebody wants to use, for instance, Groovy, we have already prototype in uh, official, even official Eclipse um, uh, repository. Uh, this guy can take it and can uh, continue to, uh, to improve it and, of course, to support it. So the main problem currently, why we focused on JavaScript, is the support. So we don't want to support everything. But it's possible to include each and every JVM language without any problem. So we already have some prototypes, let's say. We have not prototypes, we have even implemented integrations. And so basically what you're saying, it's uh, a matter of resources, because it's yep. really like uh, yeah, um, a side project, let's say, yep. yeah, that uh, we're trying to, to drive, but uh, and it's driven by, by demand, so, uh, yeah. and because, as we man, many times already mentioned, that it's open, everyone, everyone is welcome to contribute, that's why we open sourced it at Eclipse as well, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, by the way, something which can be interesting for you uh, about integration of these uh, JVM languages, uh, there are one tricky part, so most of the languages at all uh, rely on execution on, on file system. For instance, in Scala, uh, you, you have to have Scala files in the file system, right? Or in the jar. Uh, so in Dirigible, we have abstraction, and we just need a loader, resource loader implementation in the, J, uh, in the JVM language itself. For instance, uh, which uh, there is available such in JRuby that we, we use, and also in Groovy. In Scala, by the way, there is one prototype about this, but this is something that we, we need from the JVM language resource loader to be abstracted because uh, in Dirigible, we don't rely entirely on the file system. The, the, the source 
of the projects can be in some NoSQL database, in some cluster. It can be e even in, in a relational database, it could be. So this abstraction. There are some tricky parts for integration, but they are really small. At the end, it's very easy to, to introduce new language. Okay, other questions? Because we are already kind of a bit over time. But yeah, if you have any questions, we can also take them afterwards and don't want to, to take you away from the raffle and the beer. So enjoy the rest of the conference and thanks for coming. Thanks a lot.